In theory, Realme and OnePlus are a family, so they should get along well. But in fact, they are often fight against each other. As for the Realme GT6 I'm holding right now, it is beating the crap out of OnePlus A3 Pro. The A3 Pro has pretty much the same specs as the GT6, except for a little larger battery and vibration motor. But the GT6 is about $55 cheaper. So OnePlus, would you uh, please give the Ace title to Realme? The GT6 deserves it more than you do. By the way, if you're thinking about buying a new phone, GeekWheels is running a summer sales for it. Many phones that are only sold in China are well worth buying, and you can find them all here. For more details, please click the link below. As far as design goes, I'd prefer the GT6. Realme's GT series has always been innovative compared to the H3 Pro's aesthetic design. The GT5 added an LED strap on the right side of the camera, and this time around, the GT6 has an actual moon color scheme. The craters on it are vaguely visible in the light, which is very cool. It is worth mentioning that the GT6 frame has been changed from plastic to aluminum, so both the look and feel will be more premium. There are some specs that are the same as the Ace 3 Pro. Both have IR emitters and NFC, also IP65 certified for water and dust resistance. Since the more expensive Ace 3 Pro is also USB 2.0, you shouldn't expect the GT6 to have 3.0. The difference is that the GT6 fingerprint unlock area is a bit further down, and the vibration motor isn't as big as the H3 Pro. Whether those differentiators are worth $55, you decide. As you can see, the display specs of the Realme GT6 are fantastic. Some of them look even better than most of flagships. For example, the maximum brightness is 6000 nits, which isn't exactly a gimmick, as it manually reaches 1000 nits, and the full screen brightness is 1600 nits, it does seem to be a bit brighter than other phones. It's also a straight screen phone, so gamers will definitely prefer the GT6 to other curved screen phones. The four bezels are not equally wide, but the lower bezel is narrow enough to be a highlight. The only downside is that the rainbow straps will be more noticeable at certain angles. It's not a big deal, and as long as you use it in a normal fashion, you won't be able to see the straps. Since the GT6 is positioned as a performance and a budget phone, it certainly has Snapdragon Agent 3, LPDDR5X, and UFS 4.0. But compared to the Ace 3 Pro, the Pixelworks X7 Gen 2 chips are missing on the GT6. Don't worry though, frame interpolation and resolution boosting are also available in the GT6. It's just not as effective, but better than nothing. If you just look at the frame rate graph, it's perfect. But something went wrong, at the end, the processor downclocked due to overheating, and I felt the frame rate dropping below 50, but the test software still shows a frame rate of 60. I don't know if the problem was from the phone or the test software, but the fact is that the GT6 didn't hold up to the end. It's such a pity, it came so close to beating the A3 Pro. Since the Zenless Zero has only started the beta test, it seems that the Realme has not optimized the phone for this game either. Just the storing around Lumina Square already puts a lot of pressure on the GT6. It seems that all Agent 3 phones are experiencing low frame rates here, and you can't put all the fault on the Realme. At least the battle scenes are running smoothly, so Zenless Zero players don't have to worry about that. The GT6 and A3 Pro have almost identical camera systems, except the GT6 is missing a 2 megapixel macro camera. They both have the same father, so it makes sense. For the most part, the main camera takes good photos with rich colors and high contrast. The image quality at a 2x zoom is great. There can be lens flare, but it still looks beautiful in certain scenes. At night, the image quality slightly drops, but it's still acceptable. I'm okay with the main camera, the problem is with the ultra-wide camera. If we say the image quality is usable during the day, the performance at night is just unacceptable to me. Never use this camera in bad lighting condition, or your photos will always look like they are out of focus. In order to separate itself from A3 Pro, GT6 opted to sacrifice the battery capacity in order to increase the charging power. 120 watt of charging power can juice up your phone to 24% in 5 minutes, and a full charge takes 32 minutes. And with the PPS and UFCS support, third-party chargers can also charge it at higher power. Since it also has a silicon carbon negative electrode battery, it maintained the same weight as the GT5, but with a much larger battery capacity. The capacity is a little smaller than the H3 Pro, but who can blame it for having a smaller battery? The GT6 battery life already beats many of the competitors. It's labeled AI on the box, telling you that this phone is AI enabled. The most important AI feature is this, the AI Smart Loop. Okay, here let me show you how the AI Smart Loop works. 
as you can see I've typed in Metro supermarket here if I uh, choose this text long press and go to the right as you can see there's a loop here with all the apps here if I go up the apps will go and I go down the apps will go okay let's choose the map here it shows me many uh, results if I press this one directions then I can get my navigations going that's how it works okay next if I press the uh, the text and then drag it to the right and uh, I want to send it it's a, as a message okay here as you can see there's a floating window here you can just uh, type in the messages or you can press it and it will go bigger and then the text you will just input it will be here that's how it works there's also a plus realme guarantees three major system updates in four years meaning that gd6 won't be abandoned yet until you get your next phone the realme gd6 is a great budget phone although the camera isn't quite good enough to be a flagship killer but at least you'll be hard pressed to find a better phone for the same price Unfortunately, the Chinese version has a region lock, so if you want to buy it, you will have to wait for it to be released globally. A lot of phones without region locks are also well worth buying at the Geek Wheels, so it never hurts to shop there. Soon, iQOO and Redmi will be releasing their mid-range Agen 3 phones, so if you want to see the big fight between them, remember to give a like and subscribe to our channel. I'm Will from China. See you next time.